I would like to send a message to European authorities. The results are clear. We, the pro-independence parties, have a majority. We have reached more than 50% of the popular vote. The Catalan people have spoken. The time has come to negotiate a referendum of self-determination. Please get involved. Well, for more, let's cross now to Barcelona to speak with our Spain correspondent, Sarah Morris. Sarah, this election, of course, comes more than three years after a failed bid to break away from Spain. Is it fair to say, do you think, from the results we've seen, that support for independence is growing? Well, the separatist parties, uh, as you heard there at Per Aragonés, uh, would certainly say yes. They've never before been able to command in a regional election more than 50 per cent. And that independence uh, declaration and the push uh, back three years ago took place uh, with less than 50 per cent. So this is the first time they can uh, point to that point. Uh, 0.9% uh, and say that they uh, won uh, the popular vote as they see it. Uh, of course, uh, the socialists uh, were celebrating their victory last night by saying uh, that their result, the largest share of the vote and the largest number of seats in the parliament uh, means uh, that they can claim uh, victory for their strategy. And uh, uh, Pedro Sanchez, the socialist prime minister, uh, is known for saying that uh, Catalonia is part of Spain, uh, that there can be a negotiation, uh, that uh, uh, he can sit down to talk uh, with Catalan nationalists, but within the constitution. And so last night uh, and this morning, the socialists were very much saying uh, that they um, have been vindicated in their strategy of talks, negotiation, uh, but within the status quo and uh, the constitution. Um, of course, uh, that the result is so diverse that a, a lot of interpretations are possible. Uh, but uh, the separatists already calling for an amnesty for those jailed for that uh, declaration of independence. Uh, including Oriol Junqueras, who was uh, the deputy president of Catalonia at the time. Uh, he is actually ha was re been uh, released uh, by uh, the Catalan nationalist government that uh, runs uh, the jails. They gave him pr uh, privileges to uh, be released uh, after uh, serving some of his sentence. Uh, but uh, they are still pushing uh, for a full amnesty for all those uh, prisoners. Now, of course, this election took place during a pandemic. Turnout uh, was low, historic low turnout, in fact. What impact is that likely to have had on results, if any? Well, lots of the rivals um, to the uh, separatists uh, are saying that they have been hit by that low turnout, historically low, uh, 53 per cent. Uh, there's been uh, 28,000 deaths from COVID-19 in Catalonia. Uh, that's more than 40 per cent of the deaths uh, that we've seen registered in Spain. And many of the elderly and the vulnerable uh, say uh, many of the political parties uh, did stay at home. Uh, that uh, explains, say, for instance, uh, um, the Citizens Party that collapsed last night, uh, some of their uh, defeat. Uh, they collapsed from being the largest party in the parliament from on 36 seats uh, to six seats. And the People's Party, the Conservatives, uh, they went down uh, to three seats, uh, mainly uh, due to uh, national uh, corruption scandals and, and a court uh, case. Uh, but uh, Vox, the far right party, uh, went up to 11 seats. It seems as if uh, some of the populist parties that had a very strong social network were able to mobilise their supporters. And, and analysts say that some of the more traditional uh, parties like the Liberals and the Conservatives may have been impacted uh, by the fact uh, that their supporters uh, stayed at home in large numbers. Sarah Morris in Barcelona, thank you very much.